Okay, class, welcome to Physics 203, class 30. This class is on relativistic collisions, which is a very interesting topic. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we'll be using the um, concepts of the conservation of relativistic momentum and relativistic energy, which we talked about in our previous class, as well as something called the center of mass frame. So we'll have to develop um, transformations to move from an initial frame into uh, the center of mass frame where a relativistic collision is very important. And in this uh, case, we'll look at a, a positron um, colliding with a proton. A positron is like an electron, but it's positively charged. And um, the, uh, um, the positron and the proton will um, collide off each other in along one dimension. Um, so it's just along a straight line. In real collisions, they can collide along several dimensions, um, three dimensions, but um, this, this will definitely get across the basic ideas. So, um, okay, so we're gonna be using conservation laws and the Lorentz transformations uh, for momentum and energy. Um, <clears throat> we've seen the Lorentz transformations for position and time, but in this lecture, we'll introduce the Lorentz transformations for momentum and energy. So the collision we'll be looking at is a positron with a very high velocity moving to the right at 0.999c, encountering a proton with a, uh, which is at rest initially. So, um, recall that the relativistic momentum is P equal mu gamma, and the relativist, relativistic energy is E equal mc squared gamma, where gamma is one over the square root of one minus u squared over c squared, where u is the um, velocity of the particle. So um, in any interaction, these are the conservation laws, such as a collision between this positron and this proton. The total relativistic momentum and the total relativistic energy are conserved. So we have, um, we can write that as P total initial is equal to P total final, and E total initial is equal to E total final, uh, where initial and final are before and after the collision. So we can make use of these conservation laws to find the particle velocities after the collision. But um, as, I, as I hinted at a minute ago, we need to be able to change reference frames to something called the center of mass frame. And I'll, we'll define that in, in a second. But to change reference frames, we need in relativity the Lorentz transformations, and we need to know how they apply to momentum and energy it turns out they have a similar form as the ones for position and time. Um, with V as the velocity of the prime frame, the new frame relative to the original unprime frame, these were the Lorentz transformations for the position and time. Um, the new X, X prime was the gamma factor times X minus VT, and the new time was the gamma factor times T minus VX over C squared. So um, the, these are the um, corresponding or, or analogous transformations for energy and momentum. Um, you can notice that the energy transformation has a form very similar to the transformation for position, while the momentum transformation has a form very similar to one for time. So here E prime is gamma times E minus VP just like X prime is gamma times X minus VT, VT. And you can see the similarity between these as well, okay? So these are how the energy and momentum change between as we move from one reference frame to another. Um, so let's talk about the center of mass frame and um, why it might be useful. Um, so we have this positron moving to the right with this high velocity, um, 
the overall momentum of the two particles is going to be to the right because the proton is at rest and the positron has a rightward momentum. But we can imagine being in a frame which is moving to the right with some velocity and that's going to slow down the positron in that frame. It'll appear to be going slower. Meanwhile, since the frame is moving to the right, the proton in that frame will be moving to the left. So in that frame, the positron will be moving to the right, the proton will be moving to the left, and if we pick the velocity of this moving frame right correctly, we can get the, um, we can get the total momentum uh, of the uh, frame equal to zero, and that's called the center of mass frame where the sum of the momentum of all the particles involved is equal to zero. So in the center of mass frame, the initial momentum of the particles, one and two, are equal and opposite. Um, so the total momentum in the center of mass frame, as I said, will be zero. So we can write that in equations as uh, P total, um, P prime, meaning the prime frame, the center of mass frame, initial, is equal to P1 for positron and P2 for proton initial is equal to zero. And then by conservation, we know that in any reference frame, the relativistic, total relativistic momentum is conserved. So that would be equal to um, P total final, which would be P1 final plus P2 final in the again, in the center of mass frame. So <clears throat> the fact that these are, are zero um, means that these momenta just, uh, we can say that P1 prime, P1 plus P2 initial is equal to P1 plus P2 final. So there are two ways that this can happen that are consistent with um, total energy conservation. One is just if the first particle keeps its momentum. So if P1 final is P1 initial, P1 final is P1 initial, and the second particle keeps its uh, momentum, P2 final will be equal to P2 initial. In this case, the particles don't actually collide um, because they keep their momenta, they just fly by each other, okay? Which can happen, um, but that's not, we wanna actually see them hit each other and exchange some momentum. So the other way, the, the other solution, which is, ex, which is consistent with the um, conservation of energy is for the particles to exchange momentum, momenta in the center of mass frame. So in this case, the final momentum of particle one would be equal to the initial momentum of particle two, and the final momentum of particle two would be equal to the initial momentum of particle one. So in this case, with the positron in the center of mass frame moving to the right initially and the proton moving to the left, after the collision, that would reverse and the positron would be moving to the left, back to the left, and the proton moving back to the right in the center of mass frame. So this is a convenient solution um, because all we have to do is flip, exchange the momenta um, rather than solving a um, if we're not in the center of mass frame, there's a lot of algebra to do. So if the center of mass frame is so nice, how can we find the relative velocity of the center of mass frame to our, whatever our original reference frame is up here? Well, we want the total relativistic momentum in the center of mass frame to be equal to zero. And we know from the Lorentz transformation, it's gamma times this combination of the uh, momentum and energy in the unprimed frame. So that implies since gamma is greater than or equal to one, that P total minus V E total over C squared, what's in here, should be zero. And solving then for V, or rather more usefully V over C, V as a percentage of C, the speed of light, we get V over C is equal to uh, P total C over E total. So if we know the um, total momentum in the 
initial, in our initial frame and the total relativistic energy, we can immediately find the um, velocity of the center of mass frame. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, we're going to use the center of mass frame for this positron proton collision. Here's our positron moving to the right with 0.9999C, 9999C, the proton at rest. These are the masses. The mass of the positron is the same as the mass of the electron. This is the mass of the proton. The gamma factor associated with this very high velocity is 70.71. So it's really, the positron is really cooking along. Meanwhile, the proton, since it's at rest, has a gamma factor of one. So the first step is to calculate the momentum and energy values in, the, in our initial frame. And here, I'm gonna do all momentas, momentums in kilogram meters per second and all energies in joules. Um, another unit you'll see sometimes is energies in mega electron volts, MeV, and momenta in MeV over C squared. Um, but uh, we're gonna stick with SI units here just to keep things um, simpler. So to calculate these values, we use our expressions P equal MU gamma and E equals MC squared gamma. And we have U and we have gamma and we have M and we know C. So we can find these values for the proton, positron and the proton before the collision. And we get this table here. Now in this table, um, E to the minus 20 is a shorthand for times 10 to the minus 20. Um, this was taken from an Excel spreadsheet. And this is how Excel displays scientific notation. So just read this as 10 to the, times 10 to the minus 20. So notice here the proton has no momentum. Momentum of the proton is zero because it's at rest. It does have energy because even though it's not moving, it has rest energy, mc squared, while the positron has both momentum and uh, energy. And then we can total up um, the total momentum of the proton and the positron and the total energy of the proton and the positron. And we get these values here, again, in joules and kilogram meters per second. All right, so the second step is to identify the center of mass frame for the collision. And we expect that its velocity should be to the right, as we talked about before. So um, in fact, that's the case. If we take our expression, which we derived on the last page uh, for the center of mass velocity, V over C, it's P tote C over E tote. So we take this value here times C and divide by this value here, and we get 0 0.03709. So the center of mass frame moves with a velocity of about just under 4% of the speed of light to the right. Okay, so, and the gamma factor associated with that is uh, just over one, because it's a very, fairly small velocity, 1.0001. Next step is to actually transform these uh, momentum and energy values in the initial frame to the center of mass frame um, before the collision. So for that, we use our um, Lorentz transformations, which we talked about before. And if we do that, if we apply that, with uh, v, v here equal to our center of mass velocity, and P and E coming from this chart up here in the initial frame, we get these values here in the uh, prime frame. That's where these primes are here before the collision. Notice that the proton has a negative momentum in the center of mass frame, as we suspected, while the positron has a positive momentum um, also as we suspected before. And notice when we add the two, um, we do get zero, which is what we were hoping for in the center of mass frame. Okay. So then the fourth step is once we're in the center of mass frame, we just exchange the momentum in the center of mass frame to move after the collision. So P, um, uh, 
P of the proton afterwards will be equal to P of the positron before and vice versa. So all we've done is switch P of the positron, uh, P of the pro proton and P of the positron here. So we get this uh, uh, table here for the, for the values of the momentum and the energy after the collision. Um, okay, so now we're almost there. Here's our uh, collision again, just for reference. Now, once we've got those values for the um, momenta and energies of the particles um, in the center of mass frame, we wanna go back to our initial frame because we wanna know what the uh, momenta and energy are in our initial frame. So to do that, we again use the Lorentz transformations, but now the, the prime frame would be our initial frame since we're, we're moving from now the, um, we're moving from the uh, center of mass frame to the uh, initial frame, but our velocity would be opposite, minus, because whereas the center of mass frame is moving to the right, relative to the initial frame, the, conversely, the initial frame would be moving to the left relative to the center of mass frame. So it would just be minus the value that we had before on the last slide for our, for our uh, velocity. So applying this to the um, values we had in the previous table, we get the following. Um, for our uh, momentum of the proton and the energy of the proton, uh, the momentum of the positron and the energy of the positron, and the total momentum and the total energy. And we would hope that since we're back, since we're after, after the collision, that the total momentum after and the total energy after would be the same. If we look back at the previous slide, we have 1.931 times 10 to the minus 20 and 1.561 times 10 to the minus 10. And we find that we get those values. So finally, we can calculate the velocities after the collision in the initial frame. We, um, there's a nice shortcut to doing this. Um, if we look at the values here, we have P equal mu gamma and E equals mc squared gamma. If we take P times C, we get mu C gamma over mc squared gamma and m's cancel and the gamma's cancel and we just get one C cancels and we just get U over C. So PC over E gives us U over C. And if we apply that to our P's and our P and E values here for the um, back in the initial frame, we get the proton moving with a velocity 0.074. So moving to the right, which makes sense since it's being hit by the positron and the positron moving to the left with a velocity of minus 0.999. So it's really zips back to the left. So this is what it looks like after the collision. We have the proton moving to the right and the positron moving to the left. Um, and so it's almost like a little ping pong ball hit a bowling ball and made the bowling ball moving just move just a little to the right and bat this one back to the left. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of relativistic collisions. We'll explore it a little more with a problem in class. And thank you for your attention and I will see you in class.